Uh, about two years ago, I was approached by James Young at SC Electronics and Sonic Distribution about designing some products. We initially talked about acoustic products, but in the process of analysing what uh, we felt the market could really do with, we came up with the, with the idea of a loudspeaker system that actually incorporated some of the more um, extreme ideas, shall we say, that have been banded around in the acoustics world. Um, things that people haven't done in the past for the simple reason that they a, haven't been able to do it for technical reasons or more often than not for financial reasons because everyone has this idea of a small loudspeaker being cheap and cheerful whereas I persuaded James and he agreed with me that basically a small speaker isn't necessarily a cheap and nasty speaker it's just small and there's no reason why a small speaker can't be better than any other speaker on the market regardless of size actually because size isn't actually the main criteria. Um, he basically told me about SE Electronics and I knew something of the company through the microphones and I was aware of the fact that they're mainly hand-built because that's a major feature of their, um, their whole sort of concept. And I said, well, that's great because a lot of these ideas are gonna require some, some very careful hand-building, modeling, finding the right drivers, developing cabinets and so on. And James, told me basically about the factory in Shanghai and what could be done in it and I said well that sounds great why don't we just build a prototype and I'll see what we can do and at this point I had a completely blank piece of paper I didn't mention the egg concept at that point okay I then went away and started sketching up some ideas and I started doing a bit of background research because there's no point in doing something that's already been done so I was looking for some ideas basically and I went back through my old loudspeaker design books and I found some papers to do with the shape of loudspeaker cabinets and it said quite clearly and proved scientifically that the ideal shape for a loudspeaker was actually egg shaped. Ideally it would be a sphere but that is simply not a practical proposition for putting drive units into unless you can come up with some very strange shaped loudspeakers but egg shape was viable so I sketched it all up and I remember going up to SE Electronics one day to talk about sort of financial matters and contracts and all of that. And I said, well, here you are, this is what I want to do. And everybody was just blown away, completely blown away by the egg shape. And at this point, it was just a SketchUp model. Um, in fact, my son, who's an architect, actually did the SketchUp model for me using a very expensive rendering package at his university. Um, so I presented actually a very, very slick looking model and everyone was just sort of blown away. And I'd already blown myself away with the idea. I just thought it was just a great idea um, based on scientific knowledge. And the rest of it, I reckoned I could do because I'd been working with Dyn Audio. I knew about drive unit design. Phil, my um, engineer in the office, he's a brilliant electronics engineer. We knew we could design the power amplifiers. We've been doing it for 20 years. We knew we could design the control units and sound system aspects of it. We've been doing that for 20 years. Um, and that's why, in a way, we were doing it in the first place, because James knew that my background with Dyn Audio. Uh, all of that process took about six months, and then it took another year and a half, basically, to design the product and put it into production. So if somebody buys an egg, what are they going to get? Basically, a completely finished system. What the egg concept is, is a system, OK? Obviously, you have a pair of eggs, left and right, although there will be multi-channel versions in the future. And the control unit, which actually incorporates the power amps, the interface into the box and out of it. It's got several uh, choices of input, balanced, unbalanced. It's got a switchable input source select, so you can actually use it as a monitor controller. It's got a volume control, which is a very accurate sort of um, monitor quality pot, if you like. I say that because a lot of volume controls are just rubbish, basically. Um, and also, the whole thing is fully integrated. So... It's an active system, but not in the sense that you just have a loudspeaker with an amplifier in the back. A lot of active systems are just hybrid, cobbled together systems. A lot of them are. The amp's built by one company, the drivers are built by a different company, the box is built by a different company. There are a lot of people in the near field business who aren't really loudspeaker people. You know, they might make great consoles, they might do this, that and the other, but they're not really loudspeaker people. And SE, bless them, recognize that fact. And they're not loudspeaker people, they came to me and the whole process of learning how to design things and how to make things how to test them how to produce them everything has occupied the last two years of my life basically and finally finally we're coming out with a product that i think is actually the best speaker not 
only in its class, but actually one of the best speakers of any class, regardless of price or size or performance. It just happens to be egg-shaped. So people watching this are thinking, Andy Munro, Designed Air Studios and lots of top studios in the world, working with SE Electronics who make some of the best microphones around. That sounds expensive. That was a major consideration. It isn't cheap, but it's by no means the most expensive product in its, in its sort of product category or range, if you like. What we've managed to do by working with SE is to actually highly productionize the whole process. So things that would cost a lot of money, like the egg design, the actual cabinet itself, we've actually managed to find ways of making. And it's hard to describe, but you'll be able to see 3D models of the internal construction of the way this is made. And it looks for all the world like the the manufacturing process of a very, very expensive airframe for a loud, uh, like for an aircraft or a Formula One racing car, something like that. The kind of materials we're using are very, very much in that ilk. They're not carbon fibre for various reasons. Carbon fibre isn't actually the best material, acoustically speaking. Very, very dense, very, very stiff plastic is. Um, what we found basically was the kind of plastics we were using um, have a stiffness and a, and a lightness relative to the density that is absolutely very close to glass, actually. And glass has always actually been a very good material to make loudspeakers out of. But again, it's a very, very impractical thing to do. What we found is a material that's much more suitable for moulding techniques and for doing the kind of construction that is actually productionizable. And by making thousands of these, we will actually be able to keep the price down to what, what I think is a very, very competitive price for the quality of the product. So you've basically tried to build a custom speaker system for lots of people, but at high yeah. street prices? Basically, that's it, yeah. And it took a lot of work to do it, I can tell you, a lot of work. There's more design work gone into this product than any other speaker I've ever designed, certainly. Thank you. Pleasure.